All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. As always, if you learned something, go ahead, hit that like button, leave a comment, and make sure you ring the bell so you get a notification when I drop a new video. You can also catch me on Instagram at Anthony Smoke Data. So today, we're going to be in SQL Server. And so I'm going to teach you how to use the unpivot relational operator in T-SQL to change columns into rows. So in this simple example, you see I have wide data and tall data. And this is normally how humans look at data, right? In this, uh, in this format, I've got my measures in separate columns and I have a unique value, in this case, order month, right? And so in the tall data, I no longer have a unique value. My unique value is repeated now, the order month is repeated because I've taken those headers and we have pivoted them or unpivoted them, I should say, into values here in this column description column. And then those respective values are put in their own column as well. And so you'll see I have more rows in this uh, tall data fashion. Using wide data versus tall data, it's up to you and how you want to meet the requirements uh, that you have. But there are some pros and cons of the tall data format, which you can uh, pause and read here. But let's get into how we use that unpivot relational operator in T-SQL to change our wide data into tall data. Okay, so here we are within uh, SQL Server. I'm just running a little SQL Server Express on my local uh, PC here. And I'm going to show you the data that we're going to be uh, working with. And so my Tableau peeps know about uh, Sample Superstore here. So let's take a look at the data here. And you'll see I have all of these dimensions. And I've got some measures here at the end. And so let's pretend that we are modeling for, um, for our visualization uh, front end. We don't need all this. We don't want to bring all this over when we make a connection. Let's go ahead and do a select. Uh, I want the order date. Let's do, well, let's do this. I like to, when I'm in SQL Server, I just like to drag things. Let's go select the order date. And then I'm going to do a function here that, and I'll explain it after I uh, run it. And I want this to take the order date. What I'm trying to do essentially is back each order date. See the order date? See, this is the 15th. I want this to revert to the first of the month for all of my order dates. And so this is the function, combination of functions I would use to do this. So I would do a date diff, and then around that, we would do a date add. I want to add month zero, and we're going to call this order month. And I'll explain this, uh, you know, maybe if I get enough, if I get uh, three people in the comments say explain this for me, maybe I'll do it. But for now, just know that this is how uh, we get the uh, the first of the month for a specific uh, month. I'm going to be consistent here and just drag things here. I want the category. And I'm a comma in front uh, guy. You know, I know uh, some people like the commas in the back. That's fine. Uh, we're going to sum sales. Right, we're really going to aggregate this low granularity data. We're really going to aggregate it up. You see, there's 9,994 rows here, but let's pretend there was, you know, 9 billion rows, right? We would want a way to filter down these rows or aggregate up so that we don't have as many rows. So we're going to go sum of sales. I'm going to go sum of, let's say, quantity. Let's go sum of profit making a sum of discount doesn't make sense. So I've got those three from where? From Table Superstore. I'm just going to copy that uh, here. And of course, you know, anytime I aggregate, I have to add a group by. So we're going to, for now, group by these three. And I'm going to remove this alias right here. And I'm going to alias these three, so as sales, as quantity, as profit. We're going to give those an alias. 
And I can, here, let me show you this tip. I'm going to comment this out. I can go control K, control C. That's the quick way to comment things. If I want to uncomment, control K, control U. But we're going to go back and comment those out. And I'm going to run this. You'll note that I have 2,860 rows. And just wanted to show you that this order month that we used here, right, in this combination of functions backs out to the first day of the month. So what I can do now, I'm going to get rid of this order date and be mindful of the commas. I'm going to get rid of this order date, be mindful of the commas. And I can also put a cast around this to get rid of the time. So I could cast this as date. Now, if I run this, there we go. Got the order month without the time, and you'll see I only have 144 rows. So this is perfect. We are primed now to use our unpivot functionality, which I'll show you in a second. Okay, so now let's go ahead and turn our base query into a CTE, other known as a common table expression. So with CTE as, I'm going to use CTE as the name of the CTE. And again, a CTE is just a temporary named result set. I can store uh, results in there and then refer to them later in the query. So I have named this as a CTE, right? Let me go ahead and lower that. I've called this a CTE, put this between uh, parentheses, and I can select columns from my CTE. So I'll just do this, select, and I don't need to do all of this uh, functionality here, and I can refer to my CTE, right? So let's go ahead and see if this executes for us. It does, and you'll see I just selected these two from the CTE, but that's not using our unpivot. So what we're going to do, we're going to add two columns here that aren't defined quite yet, right? These columns are going to correspond to a pivot column and a value column. So our pivot, I, I should say unpivot column, what we want to unpivot, I'm going to call column description, right? And then the column that's going to hold my values, I'm just going to call column values. Now you may be saying like, this doesn't exist anywhere. That's all right. You're just going to have to step out on faith here. So now that I have those two, now here comes unpivot. So we're going to unpivot. What are we going to unpivot? We're going to always unpivot the column values. We're going to unpivot those values for column description in now, I have to know the names of my measures that I want to unpivot, and that's going to be sales, quantity, and profit. So I'm just going to say sales, quantity, profit. I'm just going to put those between uh, parentheses here, and I'm going to close this out, and let's call this on un as unpivot, unpvt, and then I can even order by, I'm going to move this here. I put my unpivot in the wrong place. Yes, we're going to select all of these from the CTE. Now we're going to unpivot. And then I can order by if I want to. Let's say order by uh, the, uh, the order month. And let's take a look at this. And there it is. So going back to review here, what do we do? So now I selected, you saw where we selected these two from the CTE originally. We added two new columns. So this column description holds our, the names of our three measures, right? The sales, quantity, and profit. And our values holds the values from those respective three column names, so to speak. So this is an unpivoted uh, result set. Now, I just want to point out that we are able to stuff all of these values into one column because they are all of the same data type. So you'll see the sales is real, the quantity is real, the profit is real. Now, what were to happen, what would happen if I said, 
hey, I want a new measure in here. So if I went up to, in my CTE, I did something like this. I did uh, count star as, let's call it record count. So it's like, okay, hey, I've got a new uh, a measure. Can I throw that into my, don't need to add it here. Can I throw that into here? as record count, record count. Will that work? Let's go ahead and try. And it'll say the type of column sales conflicts with the type of other columns specified in the unpivot list. Really, what it means is this record count is an integer. It's the first thing that it encounters. And so everything else has to be an integer. So wh what I would have to do in order to make this work, I'd have to cast it. Cast this as a float that would make it real as a record count. And so now if I were to run this, they should all be the same. You'll see I have record count now in there because I had to cast this to be the same type as the other measures. They all have to be the same type if you want to throw them in here. But uh, in any event, this has been Anthony Smoke. Hope you learned something new here about wide tables and tall tables and how to unpivot your wide tables to turn them into tall tables, which has its uses in certain data modeling situations. So again, get out there, do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching, everyone.